Lassie Farm. This is episode 7 of Ted Chiang's novel, Understand. From where we left off, my new language is taking shape. It is gestalt-oriented, rendering it beautifully suitable for thought, but impractical for writing or speech. It wouldn't be transcribed in the form of words arranged linearly, but as a giant ideogram to be absorbed as a whole. Such an ideogram could convey more deliberately than a picture what a thousand words cannot. The intricacy of each ideogram would be commensurate with the amount of information contained. I amuse myself with the notion of a colossal ideogram that could describe the entire universe. The printed page is too clumsy and static for this language. The only serviceable media would be video or hollow, displaying a time-evolving graphic image. Speaking this language would be out of the question given the limited <coughs> bandwidth of the human larynx. My mind seethes with expletives from ancient and modern languages, and they taunt me with their crudeness, reminded me that my ideal language would offer terms with sufficient venom to express my present frustration. I cannot complete my artificial language. It's too large a project for my present tools. Weeks of concentrated effort have yielded nothing usable. I've attempted to write it via bootstrapping by employing the rudimentary language that I've already defined to rewrite the language and produce success successively fuller versions. Yet each new version only highlights its own inadequacies, forcing me to expand my ultimate goal, condemning it to the status of a holy grail at the end of a divergent, infinite regress. This is no better than trying to create it ex nihilo. What about my fourth ampule? I can't remove it from my thoughts. Every frustration I experience at my present plateau reminds me of the possibility for still greater heights. Of course, there are significant risks. This injection might be the one that causes my brain to be damaged or cause insanity. Temptation by the devil, perhaps, but temptation nonetheless. I find no reason to resist. I have a margin of safety if I injected myself in a hospital or failing that with someone standing by in my apartment. However, I imagine the injection will either be successful or else cause irreparable damage. So I forgo those precautions. I already I order equipment from a medical supply company and assemble an apparatus for administering the spinal injection by myself. It may take days for the full effects to become evident, so I'll confine myself to my bedroom. It's possible that my reaction will be violent. I remove breakables from the room and attach loose straps to the bed. The neighbor neighbors will interpret anything they hear as an addict howling. I inject myself and wait. My brain is on fire. My spine burns itself through my back. I fear, I feel near apoplexy. I am blind, deaf, insensate. I hallucinate. Seen with such preternatural clarity and contrast that they must be illusory. Unspeakable horrors loom all around me. Scenes not of physical violence, but of psychic mutilation. Mental agony and orgasm. Terror and hysterical laughter. For a brief moment, perception returns. I'm on the floor, hands clenched in my hair some uprooted tufts lying around me. My clothes are soaked in sweat. I've bitten my tongue and my throat is raw from screaming, I surmise. Convulsions have left my body badly bruised and a concussion 
is likely given the contusions on the back of my head, but I feel nothing. Has it been hours or moments? Then my vision clouds and the roar returns. Critical mass. Revelation. I understand the mechanism of my own thinking. I know precisely how I know and my understanding is recursive. I understand the infinite regress of this self-knowing, not by proceeding step by step endlessly, but by apprehending the limit. The nature of recursive cognition is clear to me, a new meaning of the term self-aware. Fiat logos. I know my mind in terms of a language more expressive than any I'd previously imagined. Like God creating order from chaos with an utterance, I make myself anew with this language. It is meta self-descriptive and self-editing. Not only can it describe thought, it can describe and modify its own operations as well, at all levels. What Goodall would have given to see this language, where modifying a statement causes the entire grammar to be adjusted. With this language, I can see how my mind is operating. I don't pretend to see my own neurons firing. Such claims belong to John Lilly and his LSD experiments of the 60s. What I can do is perceive the gestalts, I see the mental structures forming, interacting. I see myself thinking, and I see the equations that describe my thinking. And I see myself comprehending the equations. And I see how the equations describe their being comprehended. I know how they make up my thoughts. These thoughts. Initially, I am overwhelmed by all this input paralyzed with awareness of myself. It is hours before I can control the flood of self-describing information. I haven't filtered it away nor pushed it into the background. It's become integrated into my mental processes for use during my normal activities. It will be longer before I can take advantage of it effortlessly and effectively the way a dancer uses her kinesthetic knowledge. All that I once knew is theoretically about my mind. I now see detailed, explicitly, the undercurrents of sex, aggression, and self-preservation translated by the conditioning of my childhood clash with and are sometimes disguised as rational thought. I recognize all the causes of my every move, the motives behind my every decision. What can I do with this knowledge? Much of what is conventionally described as personality is at my discretion. The higher level aspects of my psyche define who I am now. I can send my mind into a variety of mental or emotional states, yet remain ever aware of the state and ability able to restore my original condition. Now that I understand the mechanisms that were operating when I intended to two tasks at once, I can divide my consciousness simultaneously, devoting almost full concentration and gestalt recognition abilities to two or more separate problems, meta aware of all of them. What can't I do? And we will leave it there for now. Thanks for listening to Ted Chiang's Understand.